Welcome, Josh Wilson. Thank you. Thanks for having me in, in this virtual box, this glass case of emotion. I'm trapped. Let's get some of your background items out of the way because people are scoping out your artwork and your guitar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, here, let me So my artwork. Um, a gal named Carly Rip painted that. And um, some of your listeners might be familiar with an artist named Andrew Rip. He's a, yep. a brilliant singer songwriter and Carly and Andrew are married. Mm -hmm. And Carly's a, an incredible visual artist. She painted that, I got to commission it, pick the colors, all that stuff. Really? Yeah. And then that guitar, this one is my Taylor 314 KCE. It's been in every show I've ever played thousands of shows, all 50 states. And then you actually got a bonus guitar that you didn't probably, eh, that one there. Um, that is a Fender Offset Telecaster. And I'd pan to this side of the room, but that's the messy side. And I, I don't want you to see that side. I want people to think that I just have a very clean room all the time. I like it. Well, clearly all I give you is a door, so. <laughs> it's a beautiful door. Did you commission that door? <laughs> It's not very soundproof, and I have given the eye to my three kids that for the next eight minutes, they need to keep it down. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, well, my little boy, who's four, is above, I'm in the basement, I got a basement studio, and he's above me doing what sounds like an impression of a dinosaur, perhaps, stomping around mm -hmm. up there. So uh, yeah, maybe both of our kids will make cameos in this video. You never know, you'll have to watch till the end to find out. <laughs> Now, I hear you guys just got back from a nine-hour car trip yesterday. Yes, we did. So, <clears throat> since March, when sort of everything shut down, um, we have not really been anywhere. I, I had um, one quick little outdoor show in Virginia was, uh, a few weeks ago, and but as a family, we haven't been anywhere, done anything. We've been super careful and quarantining, and we decided we'd go see uh, my parents in Lubbock, Texas, and then uh, Becca's parents in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So we basically drove from here to Tulsa. We spent about a week there. Then we drove to Texas uh, from there and then back to Tulsa and then back home. Uh, and yeah, yesterday was a yeah, solid nine hours in the car. And how did that go? Cause you've got a four year old. You know, he does great. Um, I would just like to shout out to Steve Jobs here for the creation of the iDevice. Uh, the iPad is a lifesaver, you know, not just in uh, quarantine, uh, because that's, <laughs> I saw a tweet when all this started. It said, I want, I know one recommendation from the CDC I won't be following during all this is the, uh, the suggested screen time for my kids. <laughs> out the window out the window. Uh, I heard somebody else say, you know, right now we all need to be doing our best C plus job. And that's, that's kind of what we've been doing. <laughs> but yeah, we did. He, he watched shows and played games in the car and he's a champ. He did awesome. Do you ever do any of the back in my day before the iPads? Like how did you endure a road trip with your parents? You know, he's four, so he doesn't quite understand. He's starting to, but, but me and Becca, my wife, we do, we do that with each other. Cause we were actually laughing about it back in our day. I remember we would borrow one of those TV VHS combos. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a friend, my dad's a pastor and somebody in our church, it was like the holy grail of road trip entertainment because you had the TV, which was all of this big, just tiny, and the VHS player. <clears throat> and I remember we would tape shows that we'd watch on TV and we would watch them on the road trips. And Becca, she said that her mom, when they were little, she would always, um, they'd say, how long till we get there? And her mom would say, okay, uh, three more I Dream of Genies. So she would just tell them like how many episodes of whatever show, and that's how they told time. So yeah, makes makes me feel old. <laughs> Still feel like that's, you were like on the cutting edge though with that TV VHS in the car thing. We, we sure felt like it. The fact that we could plug it into the cigarette lighter and power it up um, yeah. and watch it on the road. I mean, it was brilliant because before that, I remember um, bringing my boom box and I had like eight D batteries or like 12 or 25. I don't know, way too many D batteries, which are already the size of my head. <laughs> and um, we would put, um, <laughs> my sister also had a boom box. I remember one Christmas, she got one and I got one. It was a tape CD combo. And we both got, um, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. The Carmen 
record called the standard. This is, I'm, I'm just laying it all out here. We both got that CD and we both got a boom box. Uh, and our, our task, our activity on the way to Arkansas to go see my grandparents, which was a 12 hour drive, was we would try and start our CDs at the same time and see if they could play, our boomboxes could play in stereo. And I don't think we ever nailed it, but. If, if I had any tech skills, I would be playing that in the background right now. Right now, I'll see if our digital team can kind of like morph it in like right here, just a quick hook of Carmen the Standard. Unless you want like, to uh, elevate it. Who's in the house, JC song. That's what we were trying to like sync up together, so. <laughs> it probably made the trip feel longer, you know, <laughs> to do that. But yeah, then we moved up to the VHS and we were all set. And then it was like, you know, watch Home Alone six times and you're there. Before we get to your new single, which I want to talk about, do you have any other current day parental road trip hacks for uh, someone in our audience that's considering doing this sometime soon? You know, uh, I, I would actually go back to old school how we used to do trips. One of our favorite games to play was the ABC game. Did you ever play that one? With the license plates? Um, well, you could do it with license plates. We would look for um, letters. If you want to do it really hard, you look for letters, of the, the first letters of words. So road signs, you could do license plates, you could do store signs. Um, and, and that actually will pass a good bit of time. However, it is like trying to line up CD players playing the same song. It is quite boring, <laughs> but it does pass the time. <laughs> now it's just podcasts. We just listen to podcasts. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and Asher, you know, like I said, he, he's on his iPad playing Paw Patrol games and hanging out. Yep. So, yeah, thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Um, okay, your new single, Revolutionary, is talking about the concept that in this day and age, kindness is a revolutionary concept, which is sort of sad. Why do you think that is? You know, well, first of all, I just, I know my own heart, and I know a lot of times my first reaction or my first response to, you know, tension or someone who's being argumentative or even being cut off in traffic, my first response is to sort of like bow up a little bit and, you know, self-defense and, you know, get angry. And so I just know that that's my, my, a lot of times my first reaction, I'm not proud of that. And it's something that I hope to continue to get better at. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It's like anytime you're on social media or watching the news, it just kind of seems like everybody is trying to one up in terms of I'm right. No, I'm right. And, and kindness and empathy gets thrown out the window. Um, and so I, I feel like we've been sort of conditioned to our first response to be to, to mount a defense or to, to justify our actions or say why, why I couldn't have been wrong in this situation. And I just, I think that's part of human nature. And so that's in all of us. But I think if we, I mean, like scripture says, if we're, if we're slow to speak and slow to become angry, you sort of take a step back, you take a deep breath, and like the song says, you ask, what would what would Jesus do? It, what Jesus would do is not usually our first response. So that's why I try and pause, take a breath, maybe say a prayer, and then remember that what Jesus would do is <clears throat> he would love first. And I think things just, they tend to escalate. Um, I know that we stay on social media because of um, moral outrage. I think we, we see the other and we think, I'm better than this, and we... That's how we get all riled up. And I just think we have a lot more in common than we do um, different. And that's what the song is about. I knew when I wrote it that this was going to be an election year and we we're already going to be super polarized, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. It, everybody makes it seem like there's just this uncrossable chasm. And I just don't think that's the case. I think we can, um, we don't have to agree with everybody, but I think we can show kindness and empathy that's what verse two says. Maybe I'm not like you, but I'll walk a mile in your shoes if it means I might see the world the way you do. Because if, if I see the world the way you do, I'm not going to be so quick to to judge. And um, and so it was a call to kindness. And of course, everything that's happening, I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm really thankful that this is the song I get to sing right now because I'm seeing so many acts of kindness during the pandemic. And then of course, 
with the murder of George Floyd and all of the racial tension and the beginnings of some reconciliation that's supposed to happen um, and that is happening, uh, I, again, this is the song I want to be singing. I want to be uh, doing my best to show kindness and empathy in any given situation, say, how can I help um, with what's going on? Sorry that answer was so long. That was great. It was, I bet you didn't realize you would be pinning the theme song for a global pandemic. You mentioned, you mentioned how many acts of kindness you do see and that they are everywhere. Where's one of the places you go to recharge on those good news stories? Oh man, well, I'm, I, I imagine a lot of you have seen John Krasinski's Some Good News YouTube channel. That's one of my favorite places because he collects all of the good things that are happening. Um, so that's, that'd be my first recommendation. Um, and then, you know, there's some other places I like to go just, just to, to laugh or to kick back. I don't know if you follow Dave Barnes on Instagram. He's the best. I'm telling you what, I gut laugh. All his videos he's been making lately, he's, he's probably the funniest person I've ever met, but I love his, Agreed. yeah, I just love his channel. But yeah, John Krasinski, some good news. You know, um, Mr. Rogers once said, uh, he said, when I was a boy and something bad would happen, and I would watch it on the TV, on the news, my mom would say, look for the helpers. There's always people helping. And if you look hard enough, you can find that. You know, I think it's not always as newsworthy as the outrageous or controversial thing that's going on, but there are always people helping. And that's what I love about John Krasinski's channel. He's pointing yeah. that out. Uh, for your next road trip, I hope that you've already discovered, you probably have, you've probably been on it, uh, Dave Barnes' new podcast, Dadville. No, I didn't know he has a podcast. Run, don't walk to download okay. that thing. One of his most recent guests was Tomlin. And as he was reading Tomlin's scroll of accolades to him, he said that Tomlin is in the category of um, one of only four artists that have billions, that's a B, billions of streams. So he's in the company of Justin Timberlake, Garth Brooks, Pitbull, and Tomlin, to which Dave and Chris start laughing about what that tour would look like. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's so yeah. good. Yeah, it's uh, a great podcast. I You're remember, I, I've, I've interacted with Dave a number of times. I'd say we're acquaintances. I, 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 wish, I wish he was one of my best friends just because he's so amazing. But <clears throat> I remember him telling a story about um, how to make people as angry as possible. You could uh, advertise a concert for the band Sigur Rose, which is, for those who don't know, it's an Icelandic band. They do a lot of like, like a uh, spacey kind of instrumental music, but Sigur Rose, like, so you, you got the people that are showing up for, the sh for that show. But then who's actually there is Bob Seger and Axl Rose. And they come out on the stage, just how angry everybody would be. <laughs> I love the way his brain works. I think this is just going to turn into a mutual love fest for the humor of Dave Barnes. If whoever's watching this, you know, forget listening to Spirit 105.3 or Josh Wilson's music. Just go find Dave. That's right. And enjoy. He's, the best. He's the best. <laughs> Um, no, actually, we're going to post your lyric video here because every line in your song, Revolutionary, is... I feel like you could just make it post-its all over the place, every line to help. So thank you for writing it. Thank you for um, thank you for your time today. Oh, before we go, uh, can you tell me the thing that made you like laugh the hardest? Um, I mean, not since we're already beating the dead horse here. Just Dave Barnes's videos. I okay. uh, I did get on a YouTube rabbit trail the other day of a bunch of office outtakes. Um, yes. And that's like my favorite. What's your favorite one? I like it when um, he spills the chili. Is it dinner? Is that the dinner party one? No, the whole dinner party is excellent. <laughs> you know I have soft teeth. <laughs> He's like dipping his food in the water. Um, and then like the tiny little TV that comes out of the wall. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. Oh it's yeah, so that's awkward. my favorite episode. That's the most uncomfortable one for sure. It's so uncomfortable. There's a meme right now that says 2020 is like being at that dinner party realizing that you just can't leave. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's this year. That's good. That's there. good. I uh, I saw uh, there's a restaurant here in town that on their sign outside right now it says I miss precedented times. Yes. <laughs> so. I love it, Josh. Well, thank you so much for your time. Great to catch up with you. 
Yeah, you too. Thanks for uh, chatting and thanks to everybody who's watching. And yeah, listen to the tune and then go watch Dave Barnes videos. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. See ya.